Welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we break down the science, stories, and mysteries behind everyday things. Today's question comes from one of our electrifying viewers, Zap Master 3000. Thanks for the suggestion, Zap. You asked, how does electricity travel through wires? We plug in our phones, flip on lights, and binge watch our favorite shows without thinking twice about how electricity actually gets from point A to point B. Is it flowing like a river? Teleporting like a sci-fi superpower? Or are tiny invisible lightning bolts sprinting through your walls like they're late for work? Today, we're unraveling the shocking truth behind moving electrons. From how power plants generate electricity to the second it reaches your devices. So stick around as we break it all down, right here on Explaining Everything. Before we can understand how it moves, we have to know what electricity actually is. At its core, electricity is all about electrons, tiny, rebellious particles that orbit atoms like hyperactive toddlers. Normally, these electrons stay loyal to their atoms, but if you give them a little push, they'll break free and start moving. When enough electrons move in the same direction, we get an electric current. If you're picturing electrons zooming through a wire at high speeds like race cars, slow down, literally. The electrons themselves move at a painfully slow pace, a process called drift velocity. It could take hours or even days for a single electron to travel through the wiring in your home. But the energy they pass along? That moves insanely fast, close to the speed of light. Think of it like a giant bucket brigade. Each person just hands the bucket to the next, and the water moves quickly down the line without any single person having to run to the other end. Electrons don't start moving on their own. They need a push. That push comes from voltage. Imagine holding a ball on top of a hill. The higher the hill, the more potential energy that ball has. When you let go, gravity pulls it downward. Voltage works the same way. It's the electric pressure that pushes electrons through a wire. The higher the voltage, the stronger the push. But not all materials let electrons move easily. Some materials, called conductors, allow electricity to flow freely. Copper, aluminum, and gold are great conductors because their electrons are loosely attached to their atoms, meaning they can move around easily. That's why most electrical wires are made of metal. Other materials, called insulators, don't let electrons move freely at all. Rubber, plastic, and glass hold onto their electrons like an overprotective parent. That's why electrical wires are coated in plastic, to keep the electricity from escaping and, more importantly, to stop you from getting a shocking surprise. Electricity doesn't always move the same way. There are two main types, direct current, DC, and alternating current, AC. DC electricity, like the kind from a battery, flows in one continuous direction, from the negative end to the positive end. It's simple, predictable, and great for small devices. AC electricity, on the other hand, is a little more chaotic. Instead of flowing in one direction, it constantly switches back and forth, changing direction 50 to 60 times per second. Imagine trying to walk somewhere, but being forced to take a step forward and then a step back over and over again. It sounds inefficient, but AC is actually the best way to send electricity over long distances because it loses less energy along the way. 
Now, how does electricity actually get from power plants to your home? It all starts with massive generators that produce electricity by spinning coils of wire inside powerful magnets. Once generated, the electricity needs to travel over long distances to reach homes and businesses. But here's the problem. If you send electricity at a low voltage, a lot of it will be lost as heat before it even gets to your house. That's why power companies use transformers to increase the voltage before sending it through high voltage power lines. This way, electricity can travel long distances efficiently. Before the electricity enters your home, it has to go through another transformer to reduce the voltage to a safe level. Otherwise, plugging in your phone charger would be more like launching a rocket. Once electricity reaches your home, it moves through the wiring in your walls, waiting for you to complete a circuit. Every electrical device you use, whether it's a light bulb, a TV, or a blender, acts as a bridge that allows electricity to flow. When you flip a switch, you're essentially opening a door and letting the electrons start their journey. Turn the switch off and the door closes, stopping the flow. Inside your walls, electricity flows through circuits that are designed to safely distribute power where it's needed. Circuit breakers are in place to shut things down if too much electricity tries to flow at once. Because nobody wants a toaster that turns into a flamethrower. So, how does electricity travel through wires? It all comes down to electrons moving from atom to atom, pushed along by voltage. Conductors make this easy, while insulators block the flow. AC electricity is best for long-distance travel, while DC is great for small devices. Power plants generate electricity, transformers adjust the voltage, and wires deliver it to your home, where it patiently waits for you to flip a switch. And just like that, electricity goes from a power plant to your phone. So you can keep watching YouTube videos instead of doing whatever it was you were supposed to be doing. Now go forth, impress your friends with your newfound knowledge, and remember, don't stick a fork in an outlet, ever. If you enjoyed this video, or if you now know what it takes just to power up your phone, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.